Some of the most innovative practice that we're seeing at the moment is definitely to be found in primary schools. And I think there are a number of reasons for that, which are not really anything directly to do with technology. There are a lot more to do with the kind of pedagogic models that you can adopt in a primary setting, which are a little bit harder in a secondary setting. And I'm just going to say a little bit about what those are and why the constraints of the primary school are not quite the same as those of the secondary school. There is no doubt that if you're going to change your approach to teaching and learning, it is a major investment for any teacher. It's quite risky and you have to be working in a culture which is not so risk averse that you are terrified to stray beyond received practice in case you suffer the consequences. So you have to have a culture in which people trust one another and in which they have a shared and common vision. Inevitably, that is easier to achieve if you have a smaller group of people. Primary schools tend to be smaller, obviously. The other thing that makes a huge difference is that individual teachers spend an awful lot more time with the same children in a primary school than they do in a secondary school. So let's contrast, for example, what's happening in schools which are experimenting with one device per child. In a primary school, you have a situation where a teacher has her class, and it usually is her class, apologies to our male colleagues in primary, who have a device each, and she gets to use those devices with those same children most days for most of the day. It's well worth a major investment of her time, her thinking, her approach to her planning can change, and she can be assured she has the technology and she has a growing cumulative skills base amongst those children. So by the end, even of half a term, you're looking at a situation where everybody is very comfortable with the way the technology operates and is starting to think innovatively about how they bring that technology into their learning. Contrast that with the rather more difficult hurdle that secondary colleagues face. We're not yet looking at a situation where every single child has a device. And even if they do in the secondary pilots, you've still got a situation where many teachers don't see an individual group of children for more than about 45 minutes a day. And they may only see them a couple of times a week. Clearly, getting that kind of sustained investment in time and resource, working together to crack how you're going to use this technology is very, very much more difficult. Therefore, the adjustments of your pedagogic model become much more difficult and even more high risk than they are for colleagues in the primary sector. So it's not surprising that some of the benefits you see from one-to-one -one projects are not accruing quite so quickly in the secondary schools as we're seeing them accrue in the primary sector.